Blessings, guys. I'm so happy to be with you guys. Um, welcome to the Patty Valenzuela podcast. I want to talk to you guys out of the topic of what um, soil are you, or if we were to title it, um, how deep are your roots? Um, how deep are they? So I want, I want to go into a parable found in Luke chapter 8, and we're going to go from verse 5 through 8. Now, I'm not going to read the whole parable. You could do that on your own, but I want to give a description of what Jesus is trying to say here. Something that caught my my ear and my attention and my spirit just grabbed onto these words was when Jesus was giving the disciples a parable. And parables were stories that Jesus would use, illustrations that he would use to give us a kingdom principle. And he, it was so profound that he actually says in this parable that we're about to read in Luke 8, he said, this, this, the word that I'm releasing to you guys, he said, if we don't listen to it, if we don't listen to it with an open heart, he said, then they're just merely stories. And then he goes on to say about this parable, which we're going to go ahead and define right quickly. But the word of the Lord says, let's read it first. Luke chapter eight, verse five through eight. And the word of the Lord says, a farmer went out to sow seeds for a harvest as he scattered his seeds, some of it fell on hard pathway and was quickly trampled down and unable to grow and became nothing but bird seed. Some fell on gravel, and though it sprouted, it couldn't take root. It withered for lack of moisture. Other seed fell where there was nothing but weeds. It too was unable to grow to fully mature, for it was choked out by the weeds. Yet some of the seed fell into good fertile soil, and it grew and flourished until it produced more than a hundredfold harvest, a, a bumper crop. Then Jesus added, shouting to all who would hear, listen with your heart and you will understand. And when Jesus gives us this parable, he was saying you need a listening heart. So he was really speaking of four types of people. So my title to you today is, How Deep Are Your Roots? When Jesus speaks to us in parables, he's trying to make an illustration always giving us a kingdom mystery. It's a mystery, and it says there in the scripture, at the end of it, when he's going to go into the interpretation of each soil, of each um, type of root system, he actually says that it's a kingdom principle. So who are these four types of soil? Well, the first one that Jesus says, he says, it's like a farmer. They went out and sowed seeds. And so he's giving a description and a metaphor, if you will. And he's saying, this is how the word of God is. And there are four kinds of people. See, because it does us no good for us to hear the word, hear the word week in and week out. It does us no good for you to continue to listen to these podcasts, although you should continue to listen to them and continue to hear the word. But it really does us no good if we're not going to apply it, if we're not doing anything with the word. So in this parable, he's giving us a mystery, a kingdom mystery a kingdom principle about when the word of God is being sown into our lives. James speaks about it in chapter one. And he said, do not deceive yourselves. He said, but when you hear the word of God, be doers of it, not just hearers of it. When Jesus gives us this parable, he says, you must listen to it with an open heart, a listening heart. A, a person that has a listening heart is a person that is willing to obey it. In other words, you hear it, then you apply it. You hear it and you do it. You hear it and you apply it to any area in your life. Because then it's just going to be merely stories is what Jesus was saying. So who are these four types of people? And how are your root system? How deep are your roots? Are they grounded? Are they founded? Do you have a solid foundation? Well, today we're going to talk about that. The first parable that he talks about, the first kind of root system, is it says, when the seed, the farmer sowed the seed, the seed being the word of God, it says the first kind of, of a scattered seed, it says some fell in hard pathway. So he says the first kind is the kind of people that have a hard pathway. So if I were to define hard pathway, let's look at it in terms of an individual, a hard pathway. So it'd be a person who has a hard pathway in their heart. What does that mean? So a hard pathway would be a person who has a hard heart. A person who has a hard heart. Well, how do we know we've had a hard heart? Well, there are a lot of symptoms when you have had a hard heart or you have a hard heart. So when the word of God is being preached to you or when the word of God is being given to you, the person's heart is so hardened 
that they're not able to capture and regurgitate and they're not able to live out the word of God. Why? Because their heart is hardened. You know, one way that a heart can become hardened is through disobedience. When a person hears the word and refuses to obey God and they keep disobeying, they hear, they know what they ought to do. James says it. If you know the good you ought to do, but don't do it, that is sin. So a person who has a hard heart is somebody who hears the word, but does not apply it. You hear the word, but you don't obey it. That means that your heart is becoming harder. Every time you hear the word, now you're responsible for it. And if we don't apply it, at least make steps towards it and ask the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to be able to do it or transform us into that, then our heart becomes hardened if we're not applying it. Another way to see and detect that we have a hard heart is through rebellion. Rebellion towards authority. When you have rebellion in your heart, hidden rebellion, sometimes rebellion is not extrovert, you know, it's, it's introvert. Sometimes it's hidden. Sometimes we don't know we have it. There's a resistance. You resist the things that God is saying. You're resisting the Holy Spirit. You're resisting the surrender of the Holy Spirit. You're resisting the um, leading of the Holy Spirit. Another way is that there is no gratitude. Another way to detect that you have a hard heart is there's no gratitude. You're not really grateful to God for all the things that he's done. You don't wake up grateful. You may gr wake up grumbling. You may wake up complaining. You may live your life in such a way where you're not so grateful anymore for the things of God. Now you're looking at what you don't have, what you've not attained, what you haven't achieved, what God hasn't answered. That is a sign that there is a hardened heart. And Jesus says, this kind of people, when they have a hard heart, something's going to happen when the word is sown. As a matter of fact, when, when you have problems in your life, there's a lot of problems. That can also be a way to get a hardened heart. We have to be careful when there are problems, how we walk them out, when there are difficulties in our lives, when there is promises that have not been demonstrated or fulfilled in our lives, we have to be careful of how we walk out that process. We cannot get hardened hearts. We have to have pliable hearts. And we have to know how to walk and wait diligently and patiently for the Lord. We don't want to get hard hearts in the problem. And another thing that I want to say about hardened hearts this hard pathway that Jesus was talking about when the farmer sows a seed is usually a person who has a hardened heart. They are prey to a spirit of Leviathan and the spirit of Leviathan operates through division. So anybody with a hardened heart is, is prey is somebody that the spirit of Leviathan is always going to target the spirit of Leviathan. I've got a book out. You want to go check it out. It's a very powerful book and lots of uh, insight as to the spirit of this time. And you'll find that that spirit is actually at work right now in the world. So when there is a hardened heart, it, usually that person will be prey to that spirit of Leviathan. Well, the Bible says that when the seed is sown to in a person, that kind of person, hardened heart, a hard pathway, it says the slander, which is Satan himself, quickly comes, snatches what was sown. So think about that. The minute you hear a word and your heart is hardened, it says that the slander immediately goes and takes the word, what was sown in your heart, and he actually steals it. So what happens is that a person who has a hard heart and is in a hard pathway, as Jesus said it, it keeps them from believing and really experiencing the fullness of that word. So when you hear the word of God, you don't quite believe it. You never get to the point where you, you know, start to grow roots and, and it's such a belief system where you believe God. So you've got to be careful that your heart is not hardened. The second kind of group that Jesus said, when the farmer sows a seed and the seed is scattered, it says some seed falls on gravel. Well, who are the people that have gravel? The people who have gravel respond to the word with joy. So these are the people that Jesus was saying, you respond to the word with joy. You're just like, gosh, this podcast was so good. Wow, the word of God was so good on Sunday. These are people that have gravel type of roots. Okay, it's a, a ground, a soil type of, of gravel kind of ground. And they respond with joy. They're excited to hear the word. They don't reject it. They're not like the people that have a hardened heart. The people that have a hardened heart, the slander quickly took it away from them. There was no roots to them. They, they, they don't believe God. They believe on Sunday while it's being preached. They believe it for a moment while they're listening to me. But immediately while you turn it off, immediately while you turn off your phone, 
You stop believing God. You're no longer experiencing what the word came to do in your life. But the gravel kind of people, they're not like that. They experience the word. They respond with joy. They're happy to hear the word of God. Maybe you're listening and you're happy to hear the word of God. But Jesus said, in a season of harassment, when the enemy comes to harass you, when the enemy is, you know, uh, his voice is loud and he's coming to harass your life in a hard season, a difficult season. Perhaps you find yourself in a difficult place right now. Maybe you're in a battlefield right now. Maybe you're going through a lot of battle and you've been in battle for about a year, two years, three years. Be careful that you are not a person that has gravel kind and a uh, gravel kind of ground or soil. And when the hard season comes in these people's lives, when the difficulties that come that the enemy has maybe sprouted up in your life and, and provoked in your life, they start to wither away, it says. They start to wither. So it's not automatic. They receive the word, but in the difficulty, you see them wither. That's the word that Jesus used. So the people that have gravel kind of hearts and soils, and they never really grow roots. They wither away in difficulties. And you'll find that in believers. What does wither mean? It means to dry up. If you look at the word wither, it's really opposite to flourishing. I mean, when you look at the word wither, it's really the opposite of thriving. So these are people that don't thrive in the word. These are people that don't flourish from the word. See, somebody who flourishes in the word is they take the word, they hear it. You're like, you're listening to me right now. And you see them and they got better because of that word. The word transformed them. Well, the gravel kind of people in the difficulty, the enemy says, I know I'm going to throw them all kinds of difficulties because I know that they'll wither. They're not going to grow roots. Why? They have no root system. So how do these people grab a kind of soils? What was Jesus trying to tell us? How can somebody be like that? Well, really, they have no root in truth. That's their problem. So gravel kind of people, they have no root in truth. So their faith is really temporary. So when somebody has a gravel kind of ground in their heart, is your faith is it's high one moment. You, you believe God, but then all of a sudden in the difficulty, you wither away. Does that sound like you? Do you wither away? Do you not flourish and thrive in the word of God? Do you take it for granted? Well, gravel kind of people have a temporary faith. Why? Because there's no root in faith. There's no root in truth. They don't grow roots in truth. In other words, the truth, if you look at the truth, what is the truth? The truth is what the word of God says. The truth is what God says. How do I not have a root in truth? That's because you meditate on lies. You think about lies. Somebody who meditates on truth is going to grow roots in the truth. That's why the Bible says whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is hopeful, whatever is of good cheer, think about these things. Are you a gravel kind of person? The third one that Jesus made reference to is the weeds. He said the, the seeds fell and they were scattered and some fell on weeds. Are you a weed kind of person? What are the weeds kind of soil? Or type of ground. Well, really, where the weed fell, the seed fell on weeds, it's people that hear the manifestations of God. You hear the miracles of God. You say, wow, God did X, Y, and Z. God performed this miracle. God did this incredible work. He delivered. He saved. He did all kinds of things. And you see the manifestations and you see the miracles of God. But the weeds, they, and if you study weeds in the natural, Weeds tend to invade crops. The weeds, if you look at them, they smother the pastures. When you look at weeds, what they do in the natural, they compete for the water. They compete for the nutrients. They are competing. That's what weeds do. So you don't want weeds in your yard. Why? Because the weeds are competing for water. The weeds are competing for the nutrients of the crop, of the pasture. So what is the result? You have a poor crop. What is the result? You have less crop. What is the result? You have less of a harvest. Are you a weed kind of person? And then he goes on to say, if you read the parable, what these weeds are. So he says, this kind of people become anxious. 
So he's going to give us the weeds. He's going to give us the weeds that are choking the word of God. He said, number one, they become anxious. So a weed in our life can be anxiousness. We're anxious. We're worried. That's a weed. And what is that weed doing? It is robbing of the water. It is robbing of the nutrients. So the anxiousness that we feel is actually robbing and competing for the nutrients, the word of God. It's competing. So picture that in your life. You got anxiousness and then you've got the word of God and they're competing, right? So the weed is trying to compete. It wants first place and anxiousness does that. Anxiousness is a weed. Are you an anxious person? You are worried about tomorrow? The Bible says, be anxious about nothing, but by prayer, petition, thanksgiving, and supplication, bring your request to the Lord, and He is faithful. Are you anxious? Are you anxious for the promise, or are you patiently waiting for God as He tells us to do? And then He gives us a second weed, and He says, the riches of this world is a weed. He said, these are the kind of people that, that are worried about the riches of the world to get up ahead. You want fame. You want to succeed. You want more money. Well, that's a weed. And it's competing for what God wants to do in your life. He said, these are all weeds. These are the kind of people that get, the word gets choked up. It, it gets sucked up. It, 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 it cannot flourish. They cannot grow roots. Why? Because the pleasures of life, and then the last one is the pleasures of life. Because the pleasures of life, what are the pleasures of life? The comfortness of life. We don't want to die to our flesh. We want to be comfortable. Please don't ask me to do anything if it's out of my comfort zone. I don't want to die to my flesh. You know, the pleasures of life. You know, I just want to live the high life. I want to do whatever I want to do. The pleasures of life, rather than following the plans of God, rather than being under submission in the things of God. Well, these are all weeds. And you know what is happening? It says these people, look what Jesus tells us about these kinds of people. The ones that allow the weeds to choke up the word because the pleasures of your life, they're choking up the word. Because the anxiousness and the cares of life, they're choking up the word. He's saying the, the riches of this world, they're choking up all the word. In other words, you are, 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 are more excited, pleased uh, to seek after success than to seek after God. Well, you, there's one competing for the other. Which one's winning? If you're saying, well, the riches of life. If you're putting more effort into your business, if you're putting more effort into the things just to get ahead, and just, and I'm not saying not to work hard, because we are to work hard and we are to be excellent. But I'm talking about, is it choking the word of God? Is that become a priority in your life? The priority should be God. He's number one. The word should be our priority. Well, he said all these weeds are choking it. And look at the result of this kind of people. These never mature and they will never be fruitful. Is immaturity something in your life? Is there lack of fruit in your life? Is there uh, no fruitfulness in your life? And is there immaturity? And I'm not just talking about because people think, oh, by your fruits, you will know them. And they think that prosperity and they think that, you know, numbers and they think that that's what Jesus, Jesus, what, when he talks about fruit, he's talking about our hearts. He's talking about the condition of our hearts. Are you fruitful in the spirit realm? Are you fruitful when it comes to the fruits of the spirit? Do you have peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, love, and joy? The fruits of the spirit? That's what Jesus is talking about. Has that been your priority? Or is the world sucking you out of the, the purposes of God, the calling of God? So when the word of God is being preached, you're like, oh, that was a good message. Oh, that's awesome. But you never mature. Your roots are like halfway. They can easily pull you out. It's easy to pull you out. So if a bad influence comes at you, you are easily pulled out. Why? Because you don't have a deep root system. Why? Because you let the weeds choke up the word. And then the last one that I want to leave you with is the good soil. The good soil, Jesus said, are the ones that are lovers of truth. These are the ones that we should be. The, the good soil, he says, and then there are those, and it fell on good soil. And these are the ones where the word of God was planted in them and they became lovers of truth. Are you a lover of truth? Do you love the truth? And then Jesus said, they hear 
and then deep within their hearts, they respond. Look what it says. Jesus said it. He said, they hear the word of God, but they don't just hear it. Deep within their hearts, it says they hear it, but deep within their hearts, it's embedded. In other words, you hear the word and you respond. And there's a way to respond. You know how these people respond? The ones that are lovers of truth, they want to know the truth. They don't want to be deceived. They don't want to be deceived by the enemy or what anything he has to say because he's a liar. John chapter, uh, John always tells us in John chapter four, and it says that he is a liar and it's impossible for him to tell us the truth. That what he speaks, it is his native language and he's a liar. But these people that have good soil, they don't want to hear the enemy. They don't want to hear what the enemy has to say. They drown out his voice with what? With the word of God. And they become lovers of truth. They're saying, God, you expose the truth. You tell me the truth. These are lovers of truth. And how do they respond? They respond by clinging to the word of God. Clinging to the word of God. That's what these people do. The ones that grow roots. The ones that have a deep root system. The ones that allow the word to transform them. The ones that don't take the word for granted that is being preached, but they apply the word. It says that they respond by clinging to the word. So they, they cling to the word. They hold on to the word. They cling to it. They, 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 they're on the edge of their seats when they hear a preaching. They're on the edge of their seats. They're saying, God, what do you have to say to us today? And then it says that these people, it says they keep it dear to them. They, they, they hold on to the word. They hold it and they hold on to it and they endure all things in faith. It says these will bear much fruit. Those are the ones that are going to bear much fruit. Those are the ones that have a deep root system. Those are the ones that are going to grow and they're going to flourish and they're not going to have a, a short, uh, you know, root system but rather they grow deep root systems like the palm tree. Like in Psalm 91, when it speaks about the palm tree, you know, palm trees have like their root systems can grow up to 13 miles down below. No wonder a hurricane can't take them out. No wonder an affliction can't take them out. No wonder no storm can take out a palm tree. You see them and they bend down and they bend back up. That's the kind of people you and I have to be. But the only way to get there is to allow the word of God that is being preached for us to respond to it, cling on to the truth, be lovers of truth, not allowing the cares of this life, not allowing anxiousness or the riches of this world or the pleasures of life to come and choke the word of God. Where we are not people that get hard hearted, that we are people that get healed and we get delivered and we allow our hearts to be softened by the word of God. That's why the Bible says that his word is like a hammer. So I'm praying for you today. I am praying that you become and you grow such a root system that is so deep and so profound. And never again will you wither. Never again will you just perish. But when the word is sown, you will not allow the enemy to take it from you. But it will produce a harvest of righteousness because you've been trained by it. I'm going to pray for you. I pray in Jesus' name that your root system starts to grow. And that this is a season where you love the word. You will cling to the word. My prayer for you today is that you hold on to the word of God. You hold on to the truth. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for your people. And I pray that they're going to grow roots like never before. I pray, Father, that the root system, God, is so deep that nothing will take them out. That, Father, no storm of life will take them out. Father, that they are people that cling on to the truth. They love the truth. They seek the truth. Father, and every spirit of deception is exposed right now. Every lying spirit is exposed right now. Father, we expose it to the light and we expose it to the truth. As your word says that your word is a lamp unto our feet. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that all of those different soils and grounds, God, they will be exposed and that you will help your people, discipline your people, God, and that you would expose any wrong heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and please pass the word to anybody that you possibly can to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, you can get all the notifications there and pick up a copy of my Leviathan book. There will I give a lot of a description and you will know when a hard heart is there that how Spirit of Leviathan will be somebody that you know goes after somebody who has a hard heart. So make sure you pick up a copy of my books. Until next time, I will see you guys. I love you all. Bless you.